Indians admire anyone who starts from nowhere and reaches the pedestal. No wonder the stories of Satya Nadella and Sundar Pichai rising through the ranks to reach the top positions which they currently are at fascinates us. And rightly so. This is because we tend to identify with those people. If they can, we definitely can too. Ms Chanda Kochar is one such personality who started as a management trainee in 1984 and rose through numerous ranks like AGM, DGM, GM, Deputy MD, Joint MD and CFO to eventually become the managing director and chief executive officer of one of the largest Indian private banks, ICICI Bank. What makes her story even more remarkable is that she did it at a time when women participation was not encouraged and that too in a male dominated orthodox industry like banking. Now to forget, ICICI Bank did wonders under her leadership. It won the best retail bank in India award in 2001, 2003, 2005 and excellence in retail banking award in 2002. On a personal front too, she received several accolades. BH Retail Banker of the Year 2004 or Business Woman of the Year 2005. Her name had become commonplace, featuring in all major global lists and magazines. She consistently featured in Fortune's list of most powerful women in business since 2005, along with featuring in Forbes, world's 100 most powerful women list, only second to Sonia Gandhi in India. Literally, she had got everything working for her. And to top this all, she was honored with Padma Bhushan, the third highest civilian award of our country in 2011. Truly, she stood as an actual example of someone who had broken the glass ceiling to reach heights one could just dream of achieving in their careers. Little could have someone known in their wildest imaginations thought that such a successful stint would end up in a high-profile loan scandal. leading up to her firing by ICICI Bank and subsequent arrest by CBI on the grounds of alleged loan fraud charges her fall from grace was nothing short of tragic what were these events that led up to this fraud what was her motivation behind the scandal who was party to this crime let's trace the story of this scandal and its aftermath it was march of 2016 when the details of the fraud started unfolding over 7 years later the fraud was allegedly committed An activist shareholder of Videocon Group and the founder of Indian Investors Protection Council, Mr. Arvind Gupta, wrote to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He flagged the concerns he had with respect to the illicit banking and commercial relationship between Mr. Venu Gopal Dhut's Videocon Group and Chanda Kochar's family. Eventually, Gupta's allegations were ignored and suppressed. However, that wasn't going to stop him. He reproduced the entire letter on a blog for the world to see. While the initial reaction to it was quite lackluster, it actually stimulated RBI to step in to investigate this matter. However, no evidence of the fraud was found. Everything was normalized. For about 2 years, people stopped talking about the case altogether. It was only in March 2018 that the case further came to light. Well, it was the same time when the Indian banking system was already reeling under pressure due to scams like those by Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi. To further hype this up, the Indian media picked up Gupta's blog. This sent shock waves across the banking industry as well as the general public. Acting on these allegations, ICICI Bank's board stepped in and reviewed their credit approval procedures and found them appropriate and faithful. They cleared Kochar of the allegations. However, on 31st March 2018, CBI stepped in and took over the case. Even ICICI Bank launched an external probe into this matter with former Supreme Court judge B N Sri Krishna as its head. By October 2018, Ms Chanda Kochar resigned from her post even before the reports were submitted. In early 2019, Kochar's and Dhut's were booked by CBI for alleged fraud and corruption in sanctioning of loan to Videocon Group. a failing company which was continuously losing market share to LG and Samsung this caused a loss to the tune of rupees 1730 crores to ICICI banks even the shri krishna report added to the wide pool of evidence that indicated their act of fraud you might be curious to know how the fraud was actually undertaken well it dates back to the time before chanda kochar actually became the ceo succeeding kv kamath As she took charge as the top executive of the bank in May 
She sanctioned loans to Videocon to the tune of rupees 3,250 crore, which clearly violated the credit policies of the bank. Given how over diversified, loss making, and debt ridden Videocon was, they were sure to default. And so they did, causing wrongful loss to the bank. In fact, ICICI Bank's profitability halved and gross NPS almost doubled owing to its write off. What's more prominent is that it was structured as a quid pro quo arrangement. By quid pro quo, it is implied that the Kochal family wanted monetary gains against the illicit loans advanced to Dutz. Let's understand the parties involved in this arrangement. First, we have New Power Renewables, a company founded by Chanda Kochal's husband, Mr. Deepak Kochal, in 2008. Second, there was Supreme Energy Private Limited, an independent entity with alleged connections with the Dutz. And lastly, there was Pinnacle Energy Trust, again managed by Deepak Kochal. It's interesting how intricately these transactions were carried out through these entities. Dood transferred rupees 64 crores to New Power Renewables through SEPL, which was transferred to Pinnacle Energy Trust. Effectively, it was executed as a transfer of funds to coachers while escaping legal lengths. Thus, there was a clear conflict of interest between coachers' monetary pursuits and banks' interests. Quite complex, isn't it? Well, it is this tedious route that held them mass transactions for so long. But not for too long. As soon as the coachers and dudes were held, serious repercussions followed. Chanda Coachers' post-retirement benefits, which included over 6.9 lakh shares of ICICI Bank, were denied to her. Moreover, their assets worth Rs 78 crores have been attached by the Enforcement Directorate. And while they had evaded prison through a series of bails over these years, Finally, the CBI on 23rd December 2022 arrested the husband-wife duo in the Videocon loan fraud case. A prolonged probe over the years finally coming to a close. We must also recognize how ICICI Bank recovered and grew under Mr. Sanjay Bakshi, the succeeding CEO, and reached pre-2018 NPA levels and profitability in just a few years, thus retaining its position in the industry. A great case study, isn't it? She rose as a driven woman who broke all shackles to be the best she could. She fell as a banking titan, giving in to her personal pursuits. I'm sure you must have been taken aback by this story of Chanda Kojar. If you're still looking for content like this, make sure you subscribe to upsurge.club. Do not forget to like, share and comment such that the YouTube algorithm keeps working in our favour.